you guys good morning. What's going on? A little bit of technical difficulties this morning, getting a little bit of a slow start. I'll give just a minute for folks to join in. Hi, my name is Valerie, and I'm one of the yoga teachers and health coaches with Bounty and Soul. And we have this class every Tuesday from, it's live from 9.30 to about 10.15. Um, but they are recorded in the sense that they stay on the Facebook page. So you guys can come back to them anytime. Good morning. Um, yeah, so you can come back anytime and come to these classes. They're um, gentle for all levels. <clears throat> and today um, we're going to even be more gentle than um, than maybe sometimes. So real gentle, slow flow class for all levels. I'm gonna try to give modifications that will work for folks that are in the chair. Um, when this class was taking place in person on Tuesdays, also you guys can drop comments if you can't hear me um, or if something's going on tech-wise on my end, please feel free to let me know. Um, but in the Tuesday in-person class, we had folks of all ages. I think our oldest um, student in that class was 93. So some folks were in chairs, some on the mat. And I would often give demonstration in both. I don't really have a chair that fits in the um, setup here, but I want to be sure to be giving some instruction for folks that are um, in a chair. So just knowing that if you're in a chair the whole time, that's great. If you're on the mat, that's great. Somewhere in between. Um, and just in the same way that we can modify by being in a chair, if you're feeling like you want a little more heat, a little more flow than what we're doing together, you can always feel free to add in some sun salutations um, or anything along those lines. Some of these. Um, I need to come in here. <laughs> No sound, huh? Okay. Let's see. Let me maybe pause for a minute, you guys. Sorry about this. I wonder. Anybody else? Can you guys hear me? I'm gonna. Not sure what might be doing that. Um. Hmm. Let's see. How about now, Mac? Can you hear me? You out there? Audio. Thanks for letting me know, Mac. Um, let's see. Oh, it's on your end. Okay. All right. Well, if anybody else is experiencing problems, let me know. If that is on my end, I definitely want to know about it because I could sit here and talk this whole time and not know that's happening. So, uh, <clears throat> all right. So, <clears throat> all right. So, let's just start off with. Scanning the body a little, coming into our space with the breath. So just beginning to, so if you're seated on the floor, uh, maybe having a little support under the tailbone so that the hips can be relaxed. We're sitting in a chair, bringing the feet to the floor. And just noticing, noticing the places where the body is in contact with the floor. So maybe where the feet touch the floor, bringing your awareness to the shins and the calves, maybe get beginning to bring the breath into awareness as well by breathing in through the nostrils and breathing out through the mouth, continuing with that breath, and then bringing awareness to the knees. As we scan the body, maybe you're just bringing your attention mentally um, or with the breath to that place, or you can bring some gentle movement to it, 
your love, and help this lymphatic flow too, which we'll talk about today. Bringing awareness to the tops of the thighs, back of the thighs, the crease of the hips. Bringing awareness to the hip sockets, to the lower back and belly. Maybe transitioning with the breath, so breathing in through the nostrils, deep into the belly, and exhaling through the nostrils as we continue to scan the body. If you prefer uh, exhale through the mouth, you can continue with that. So bringing awareness to the ribs, to the front and the back. Forearms, the upper arms, the shoulders, to the heart, collarbones, the throats, jaw, the face, ears, and the crown. And just releasing the hands and the comments. <clears throat> and then inhaling, <clears throat> excuse me, and as you exhale, I think we might do some little sinus opening tapping too. I don't know about you guys, but the rain and the change of seasons is going from cooler weather, so we're bringing the ear towards the shoulder and back around towards the knuckles. And change of season and combined with the dampness, sometimes we Feel that in our body, a little stickiness in the body, like in our joints and in the sinuses. So gentle movement, even if it's really, really gentle, like what we're going to be doing today, can be so helpful. I've said it before in other classes, I don't think I've said it in a while, like motion is the lotion, right? Sometimes we feel like, oh, I'm so stiff, or maybe even, you know, some amount of pain back to center, inhale, lifting the shoulders up towards the ears, circling down and around. Um, so it can feel a little counterintuitive sometimes, right, if we're in pain and thinking, I, you know, don't want to move, but really um, that gentle movement is so important, otherwise uh, our lymphatic system gets stagnant, right? And in all areas, generally speaking, we're not wanting to be stagnant, right? And changing directions, inhaling up, exhaling forward. So like I mentioned before, you guys, please give me feedback if you can hear or other issues are happening technically <laughs> that I'm not aware of. <clears throat> and then coming back to center, we're going to inhale as we lift the shoulders up towards the ears, and then exhale as a um, more forceful, audible exhale. So inhaling, exhale, <sighs> let's do four more of those, inhale, too as we go through you can always modify that more forceful exhale then we might come back to the gentle so inhaling the arms up exhaling hands to heart center inhaling up exhale inhaling up exhale heart center <clears throat> inhaling up this time as we exhale we're going to turn towards the right I'm not mirroring on video, you guys. Usually in class, I'm mirroring. Inhaling up. Exhale, turning to the right. So left hand comes to the outside of the right knee. That right hand, if you're on the floor, those right fingertips are on the floor behind you. If you're seated in a chair, <clears throat> feet are still on the floor. That right hand might be holding on to the side of your chair or the back side of your chair. Wherever you are, on the inhale, finding length in the spine. 
And on the exhale, drawing the belly in. Two more breaths. Inhaling through the nostrils, exhaling also through the nostrils. So feeling that breath coming all the way down into the belly. Belly expands, exhale, drawing the belly in. And inhaling to center, <clears throat> exhale, releasing hands to the floor. The palms come onto the floor. If you're in a chair, guys, you would be releasing your hands onto your tops of your legs. <clears throat> so grounding the palms on the floor or tops of the legs. Inhale, looking up. Hips and sit bones stay really grounded, lengthening the spine, lengthening the neck. And then exhale, rolling forward. We'll do this a few more times and then come into a forward fold here. Inhaling. Exhaling. Two more. Exhaling. So as you come forward, so for some of us, that forward fold is going to be high up and still close to the shins. For some folks, it might be walking a little more forward as the hips stay really drawn back. So we're going to be lifting up off the floor, off the cushion, off the chair. And for seated folks, your knees are bent, your feet are on the floor, <clears throat> and your hands are on your upper thighs, and you're coming into Fold. It might be like this. You might cross the arms and fold forward. We all have different bodies. We all, and our bodies might feel different even from one day to another. Just honoring where you are today, allowing yourself maybe to slow down a little. To focus on the breath and those spaces between the breath. <clears throat> Inhaling, coming back up. Um, so, gosh, time goes so fast. We started a little late today, I guess, um, so we'll probably run a little over, if that's okay. Inhaling up. Exhale, we're going to twist to the left this time. So that right hand comes to the outside of the left knee, that left hand, fingertips are on the floor or holding on to the side of your chair or back of your chair. So this is something, you guys, that even if uh, your usual yoga practice is on the floor or on the mat, if you are sitting in a chair often for work, this is a great one to do just throughout the day. Stop every once in a while. Come back to the breath. Find a nice twist. Inhaling, lengthening the spine. Belly expands. Exhale. Two more. And inhaling back to center. Exhale one more time. We're going to come through this little flow of hands on the ground or hands in your lap on the tops of your legs. Inhale, lengthen the spine up. Exhale, fold. Inhaling up. And welcome back to center. Inhaling the arms up overhead. Exhale, we're going to bring the right hand down towards the mat. Extend the left arm overhead. So if you are in a chair, your hand's obviously not going to touch the floor, right? So that arm's just going to be down by your side if you're in a chair. Could be holding onto the chair or just hanging by your side. If you are on the floor, that palm's pressing firmly into the floor. Some folks might even want to bend the elbow and the whole forearms coming towards the floor, deepening the stretch here. Again, staying really grounded. Sit bone stays on the floor. And inhaling back up. Exhale, other side. Okay, we're going to do both sides. Noticing the difference from one side to the other. It doesn't always feel the same, right? So again, if we're on the floor, that left hand's pressing into the floor. Maybe the left arm is bent as the forearm comes towards the floor. 
If you're seated, most likely that arm's hanging down by your side or holding onto the side of the chair as a stretch is happening this way. And seated, you want to always have, if it's available, a feet on the floor. So please don't touch the floor. You can tuck a pillow or uh, books or something up under there. Let's do one more time to each side. And coming to center. So those of us um, that are on the floor, let's stretch the legs out a little bit. I'm going to do a little more on the floor. Um, but yeah, this would be a good time to come into a little um, lymphatic massage for the legs. We'll do the same thing for the arms. So seated folks, you can do this too in your chair. Those of us on the floor, um, perspective on this is really fun to write down. <laughs> so <clears throat> we're going to inhale the arms up. Exhale, folding forward towards the toes. Seated folks, you're just doing that same thing, folding forward um, towards your lap, towards your toes. You may or may not touch them. And then bringing the hands along the outside of the legs. We're just going to run the hands along the outside of the legs. Inhale up. Exhale, reaching for the toes. We're just going to bring the hands along the inside of the legs there. Okay, and up and back down. If you want to stay here with the legs um, instead of coming up and all the way down, that works too. But we want this motion to always be, for a lymphatic massage, always towards the heart. So that upward movement, right? Gravity is doing it for us going down all the time the other way. So we want to help it out here. So maybe get a little extra love around the knees and the hip joints. <clears throat> and then if you want to shift it up a little. <clears throat> Let's come back to your seat. <clears throat> We're going to do a little seated cat cow. Um, folks that are on the floor, if you're ready to come on over to hands and knees, you can. We're still going to come to hands and knees in a minute for cat cow. But, um, and seated folks, just right, still right where you are in your chair. Inhale as we come forward, leading with the chest and the chin. And then exhale, chin in towards the chest, navel towards the top. And peek up here, see if there's any comments. You guys keep going with your cat cow. Okay, I can hear you. So continuing with your cat cow <clears throat> breath. Again, uh, if you want to make this a little faster movement or if you're getting into the slower movement this morning, you can also bring it a little more through, a little more flow. Really asking yourself, like, what does my body want in this moment? And the next time that you're forward, moving from forward to the right, and back, and around, but keeping the sits bones, keeping the whole bottom grounded as the movement's coming from the base of the spine up. Changing direction. And then coming back to center, so bringing the arms, inhaling up overhead. And then we're just going to do some of that same lymphatic um, assistance like we did on the leg. So we're just going to first with the right hand on the left arm, both sides of the arm, bringing it down towards the heart, around under the armpit. And then on the other side. A 
collarbones, feeling that tapping out through the edges, shoulders. We'll bring the hands to butterfly hands on the front of the mat. Gently pulling to the sides of the neck forward. We're going to bring the hands to the sides of the ear. So hands like this, if that doesn't work, just to find a way to have your fingers on either side of the ear. Kind of bringing that down along the sides. And then we'll have this under the jaw for the bottom fingers. Then tapping from the inside of the eye to the outer corner. Tops of the eye. And from the center of the forehead out. Little massage on the whole head and then just back down. So we're going from the forehead and the center of the eyebrow out to the side under the eye, side of the ears. So, again, all these things that we're doing today, really from any yoga class, you can break them down. I mean, we don't have to sit down for 30 minutes or 45 minutes or an hour. Um, a lot of these things are things you can just do throughout the day. Take a break. If you're working from home on your computer or um, you see this a lot for whatever reason, butterfly in the front, you can just take a stop, bring some movement. Even if it's just that little lymphatic movement, right? Of the arms, the legs, a little tapping. And then just noticing, so I um, was a little stuffy this morning, so I'm feeling a little opening in my body today. <clears throat> All right. Tap a little to hands. All right. So coming on to hands and knees for those of us on the floor, um, we did find that you can stay seated. Um, if that's where you're wanting to be today, and the chair looks really good around. <clears throat> All right, so coming into hands and knees, coming onto hands and knees, little cow. Let me just get my hair out of the way, you guys. <laughs> so if you know where we're going, go ahead, and I'll meet you down there. Coming back to cat cow, seated folks. So we're just coming back to what we were doing before. <clears throat> Inhaling, lifting the chin, lifting the tailbone. Exhale. Pressing the palm into the floor, navel toward the spine. Inhaling and exhale. So we're gonna bring a little flow to this here. Inhaling as the chin lifts. Exhale, pressing the hands into the floor, lowering the tailbone down towards the ankles. Inhale, sweeping through. So seated folks, the way that might shift for you, we kind of touched on this before, Seated folks, if you're in a chair, you're inhaling, and as you're inhaling, you're really coming down, sweeping through, exhale. So you're making this um, a more, maybe, a deeper motion. For seated folks, too, it can help to spread your knees wider, um, feet on the floor, and you're bringing that through this way. All right. So finding your own flow, that feels good. Noticing how that movement is feeling in the spine. Again, you decide the pace, staying with the breath. And then coming back to tabletop, finding some more um, circular movement. Maybe by bending the elbows. Circles in both directions. Still staying connected to the breath. If you find yourself holding the breath, 
Coming back to inhaling through the nostrils, deep into the belly, exhaling. And maybe finding any other type of circular movement that feels good. So maybe that's finding some circles just with the pelvis. In both directions. Or maybe that's coming forward and around. Whatever you're doing, making sure to do it in both directions. And then coming back to <laughs> tabletop. <clears throat> Inhaling, and as you exhale, stepping the left foot back, toes curled under, just gently rocking back and forth. So seated folks, if you're seated and staying in the chair, you're going to extend that left leg out in front of you, and that uh, foot's just pointing and flexing. So left leg, left leg is extended, pointing and flexing the toes for seated folks. Um, so both, whether you're here or seated doing that, you're, the stretch you're feeling is in your <clears throat> and then inhaling, lifting that back leg, exhale, drawing the knee into the chest, inhale, extend it long, exhale, draw it in. So folks on the floor, keep going with that. If you're seated, you're going to be doing that same thing. I can't really show it without the chair, but you're making a similar movement. So seated folks, um, Folks on the floor, you can just keep going. Seated folks, your left leg is extended out. You are pointing and flexing. Now, perhaps you're drawing that knee into the chest, extending it back out. You're just doing that. What I'm doing now, you're doing in the chair, perhaps. Or you can continue with the point and flex. <clears throat> to the floor, spreading the knees wide, coming into child's pose, and releasing the head towards the floor. So seated folks can spread the knees wide, feet are still on the floor, you're crossing your arms and resting your head on your folded arms. That's for folks in the chair. You could do that here too, actually, but <clears throat> that gives a similar fold for folks in a chair. Maybe three more breaths here. Go to a little side stretch here. <clears throat> so inhaling and as you exhale, folks on the floor, the hips stay just where they are. Hips stay where they are and you're going to walk the hands to the left. So walking the hands to the left. Draw both hips back in case hips have come forward and up some. And then walk that right fingertip out any bit more. So feeling that stretch all on the right side of the body. Right hip draws back. Seated folks, you're just in your forward fold, walking your hands towards the left leg, the outside of the left leg, whether that's the outside of the lower left leg or upper left leg. Coming back to center. Inhale as you exhale, walking the hands to the right. Again, drawing your hips back, walking the fingertips forward. <laughs> and coming back to center. Grounding the palms, coming up, back to tabletop, <clears throat> maybe cat cow or whatever you feel like you need to reset. And then inhale as you exhale, folks on the floor, right leg back. Rocking back and forth to get a stretch from the calf. Seated folks, you're extending the right leg out as straight as possible. Right heel is on the floor, and you're pointing and flexing that right foot. And then as you're ready, we're coming to this movement of lifting that back leg. Inhale as you exhale, drawing the knee into the chest. Inhale, extend it long. Exhale, draw it in. So remember, folks on the floor, uh, folks on the floor, just continue on. If you're seated, remembering if you're seated, your feet are on the floor. 
<clears throat> that front foot you've been pointing and flexing. Inhale as you extend that leg. Exhale, drawing the knee in toward the chest. You can use support of the hands and then extend it along. I'm doing this on the floor, but this is for uh, folks in the chair as a modification. <clears throat> and come back, tabletop. <clears throat> so we're gonna do a little side stretch. If you have a bolster or a blanket, um, it can feel nice to use a bolster for this. And if you're seated, I'm gonna show the modification for seated. So you can stay seated with your feet on the floor. So if you don't have a bolster, you could just fold up a blanket or towel, like so. <clears throat> and first, just bringing the hands to the outer edges of your uh, bolster or blanket, inhaling, and as you exhale, we're gonna turn and squeeze left shoulder towards the left hip. Seated folks, you could do just a gentle twist here. Coming back to center. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna bring the folks on the floor. You're gonna bring the left hand either just to the center of your mat, or if you have a bolster, a blanket, or a towel, and bringing that here. And we're gonna, I'm gonna get the bolster because this is slippery on the floor. All right, so we're gonna inhale, lifting that right arm up. Exhale, needling through. We're going to do that four or five times before we come to land here. Folks on the floor, just continue with this flow. And then you're going to land down, shoulder, arm, head on your bolster floor or blanket. So seated folks, <clears throat> you're going to do the same thing seated. So imagining my feet are on the floor, I'm in a chair. My left hand is just going to rest um, on my left thigh or outside of the left leg. My right arm is coming up. We're gonna turn in towards that right lifted arm and exhale, needling through, okay? So you're doing the same thing, inhaling up, exhaling, needling through. Whether uh, folks on the floor, you may have come to land here. Seated folks, your feet are on the floor. As you needle through, maybe the fourth or fifth time, you're just gonna come to rest here. It might just be hanging. Maybe your arm comes down more towards your lap. So, just finding your spot to land here. And so, folks on the floor, your hand, your left hand might be out in front of you, fingertips on the floor. Seated folks, that left hand is probably resting on the top of your leg or side of your left leg. You can stay here or maybe experimenting with lifting the arm up, bringing the hand to rest on the sacrum. Some people like to bring that hand over to the side of the hip. Just honoring what feels good to you, but you might just be staying right here, focusing on relaxing the neck, focusing on this twist as the ribs on the right side are twisting down toward your lap or towards the floor. And then grounding the palm, coming back to the center here, or grounding on your leg. Inhaling back up. This time, maybe a few rolls in the wrist here. And then exhale, coming back down. And a little reset, whatever feels good. Cat-cow, regular cat-cow, or that little flow, cat-cow that we did. Or squeezing the hip. So we're just coming to the other side. So bringing the right hand to the center of your mat, bolster, blanket, or in on your right thigh if you're seated. And then inhaling up. Exhale, needling through. Inhaling up. Exhale, needling through. So the folks, if you're on the floor, just keep going with that. I'll do a quick kind of demo for seated. So if you're seated, your feet are on the floor. 
Your right hand would be resting on your top of your right thigh. And you're inhaling up. Exhale, needling through. So that's the same movement. So you really recreate in one way or another. Um, those are the movements of any yoga asana, yoga pose, yoga flow in a chair, right? So don't be discouraged. You're not comfortable for whatever reason being on the mat. You're still alive to move. So build strength. And come through. Again, coming to rest here, extending that right arm. And deciding where you want to be on this side. You could just stay right here with fingertips on the floor. Making sure the neck and shoulders can be relaxed here. So that might be really what you're working with. Or inhaling that arm up. Maybe bringing the hand to rest on the sacrum here if you're on the floor. Or coming down. Couple more breaths. And slowly coming up. And then finding your way, if you're on the floor, finding your way onto your back. Um, if you're seated, you're staying where you are. And folks, if you're seated, maybe just line the knees to talk from one side to the other. Just kind of a reset, walk your feet to the outside edges of your chair. And just let your knees fall from one side to the other. We're going to do a similar thing here on the floor. So lying on the floor, feet to the outside edges of the mat. Just allowing the knees to fall to the left. Knees fall to the right, head to the left. Side to side. Is that a faster rocking motion? Or do you want to hang out for a few breaths on each side? And maybe bringing the knees into the chest, gently rocking from side to side, a little reset. We're going to do a little bit of a hip opener, a hip stretch, and then a little bit of breath work in Shavasana. So we're running a little bit over. Normally we're aiming to finish at 10.15, but we start a little late and had a little... A little technical difficulty, so we're probably going about 10 minutes over. So keeping the right knee drawn into the chest, folks um, that are seated, you can keep your left foot on the floor as an option as you draw the right knee up and in towards your chest. And we're just making circles with that knee, using the hand for help and support, walking in both directions. And bending the left knee, left toe, the left foot on the floor, bringing the right ankle to the left knee, pausing here for a moment, just bringing your hands back to the crease of the hips. We might have brought some attention there in the beginning of class when we were uh, just noticing all the different parts of the body, gently pressing the right thigh away from the body. And then folks on the floor, Option to needle through the space you've created as you lift the left knee, drawing that left knee in towards your chest. <clears throat> so folks on the floor, just staying where you are for a few breaths. Seated folks, again, there's a very similar option here. So you're seated, your feet are on the floor in a chair. That la your left foot staying on the floor, bringing your right ankle to rest uh, on your left knee, and then your palms are facing up, right palms resting on the right knee, left palms resting on the left ankle, inhaling and as you exhale, option to fold forward. That forward fold is what's intensifying the stretch, the same way that on the floor drawing the knee is intensifying that stretch. Um, if it's not an option to place your ankle on your knee, for those of you in a chair, you could cross 
your feet at the ankles and have a slight fold forward. All right, so wherever you are, maybe three more breaths. Releasing that left foot to the floor, extending the right leg long this time, drawing the left knee into the chest, and then we're making circles with the left knee this time. More circles in both directions. And then coming back to center, bending the right leg, Left ankle comes to the outside of the right knee. Again, pausing for a minute just at the crease of the hip. We're bringing the hand to that crease and gently pressing the left hip away. Just giving yourself a little adjustment. Option, you can stay here if your hips are feeling really tight. Inhale. On the exhale, option to needle through. Interlacing the fingers either underneath the knee or in front. Um, if so interlace your fingers in front though. If you need to lift your head like this, you really want your head to be able to relax. So if you can release the head down here, um, great. But if not, if that's not available today, and you're interlacing under the knee, you can keep the head and shoulders more relaxed. And then folks on the chair, folks on the floor, just stand here for a minute. Remember, same thing, your right foot's on the floor, your knees are bent. We're bringing perhaps the left ankle to the right knee, palms are facing up, inhaling and as you exhale, folding forward. A couple more breaths. And then slowly releasing the feet to the floor, taking the next minute or so for any movement that you feel like we did not get to. So if you um, folks on the board like a bridge pose or feeling that today or have a baby or a side stretch of some sort, just take a minute to um, find any kind of movement that you're feeling drawn to. So staying on the floor, if you're already on the floor, we're getting ready to move into Shavasana. I'm just coming up so that I can put some music back on and look at my notes. So again, if you're on the floor, taking a minute or so for any movement that you're feeling called to. <clears throat> and then releasing your feet to the floor. Extend the legs long, getting ready for Shavasana. Seated folks, just finding a comfortable seat, making any adjustments. Be comfortable for the next couple of minutes. Come back and find my music. So just wherever you are, seated or on your back, noticing, again, just scanning the body, noticing what there is to notice, noticing where the body's coming into contact with the floor, with the mat, noticing how you may feel different or not from 45 minutes ago when we were scanning the body at the beginning of class. And I had intended to do a little more with a mantra meditation today, and we'll come back to that some more next week, but we can still bring it in a little here at the end um, before we really split into Shavasana. So the mantra that I was kind of called to work with a little bit today is so hum. Um, 
And translations for that um, are I and that. Meaning, um, you can interpret that in different ways, but one that I really like, um, that I was looking at today and that was in that post, was the universe exists within me as much as I exist within the universe. Um, so I am that, right? I am the universe, the universe is me. Um, that oneness, right? Um, is what we're often searching for, I think. And one of the benefits of using mantra with meditation, um, whether you're feeling resonance with you know, the translation of a mantra or not, sometimes even just repeating the words and the sounds, these universal sounds, right? They're um, old and ancient. And sometimes just repeating those sounds gives our mind something to tune into, right? Because often one of the challenges with meditation can be just uh, not having the monkey mind, right? All the thoughts about things we need to do and how we're feeling and what so-and-so said and you know what we're going to say back. And um, so sometimes even just having something for the mind to center on with mantra can be powerful regardless of what, whether we even know what the meaning is, right? So uh, the idea with this mantra is that we're breathing in. So the inhale, on the inhale, we're mentally saying so. Pausing in between and on the exhale, mentally repeating hum. So inhale so. So just for about a minute, um, and then if you are resonating and want to continue with that mantra, um, feel free, or if you're ready to release that mantra and just be in Shavasana for a minute. So we'll do that in silence for about a minute, and then I'll play a little song with it. Shavasana, so remembering, inhaling, so... Exhaling, hum. Inhaling, so. Exhaling, hum. So you're continuing repeating that mentally on the inhale and exhale. I am. I am. The universe exists within me as much as I exist. And then your choice. If you're really resonating with that, you can continue. Again, remembering this is something you could come back to any time during the day. Um, but if you're ready to release that mantra and just be in Shavasana on your back with arms by your side and palms facing up, or if you're seated, just being comfortable in your seat, arms be by your side or in your lap. Be here for about a minute or so. Even in a really gentle practice like we had today, that time at the end in Shavasana for integration and stillness. And the gifts to ourselves.
continue to bring some awareness back to the body. As you're ready, whether you're on the floor or seated, finding some gentle movement. Could be fingers and toes, could be on the neck, on the shoulders. It's just really gentle. Any kind of free movement that feels good. If you're on your back, inhaling the arms overhead, stretching the full length of the spine. And then on the exhale, slowly coming over onto one side. Gently pushing your way up. Come back to seated. Release here. And also, you know, if you're at home and you're feeling super comfy um, on the floor in Shavasana, please feel free to stay there. <sighs> And if you're joining us back here and seated, maybe bringing the hands together, maybe the feet and warmth. It's a little chilly here today, tuning in. Bringing the hands to heart center. Yeah, just noticing what there is to notice. And maybe bringing the hands together, palms pressing toward each other, thumbs pressing together. Thumbs pressing into the sternum. And just an invitation, if you like, um, when we had class together on Tuesdays, I often put an invitation at the end of class to pause in gratitude. Um, just gratitude to yourself for making time in your day to show up, to be here together. Gratitude to Bounty and Soul for creating this virtual space for us. Gratitude to Bounty and Soul for the markets, which will be happening soon. They're from 11 to 1 today, 4 to 6 on Friday at the Bylow Shopping Center in Black Mountain. Um, but gratitude to all the people that make these markets happen, right? There's staff, there's tons of volunteers, folks that work in the stores that are uh, getting the food to the markets, farmers, um, so many people, community garden workers. So it's with that heart of gratitude that the light in me honors and sends the light in each and one of you. I hope that you have a great week. Thank you for being here, and we'll see you next week. Namaste. And as always, you guys feel free to reach out with any questions or comments. You can come here, or uh, you can private message us. Take care, you guys.